<laughs> All righty, our first reading this morning is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 4. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Here ends the first reading. This morning's psalm reading is uh, selected verses from the 27th chapter, and uh, we will read these uh, verses responsibly. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Today's second reading is from the first chapter, 1 Corinthians, verses 10 through 18. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, that, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of, household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Here ends the second reading. Would you please rise for the gospel? The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter, beginning with the twelfth verse. Lord, Lord. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled, land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, 
Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from Jesus, who bids us all to come and follow him. Amen. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee and made his home at Capernaum by the sea. Picture Capernaum on the northwest shore of Lake Galilee. Similarly situated, like Garrison is on Malax Lake on the northwest shore. Both are small fishing towns located on large, round bodies of water. Laws and regulations are riddled on both bodies of water. On Galilee, commercial fishermen worked for wealthy landlords. They would be paying out taxes for licensing. Uh, There would be certain quotas that fishermen would need to bring in for these wealthy landlords. There was taxation uh, as high as it was between 40 and 60 percent of their catch, all securing Rome's power over the waters and what was in these waters. Fees would be taken as the fishermen would come in by They were called toll collectors, and the fishermen would either pay them in fish, or if they had coins on them, they would give them those. And on Mille Lacs, for the last, I don't know how many years, there has been lots of talk about regulations and what to do there as well. Over the years, I don't need to repeat all of the things that are going on Mille Lacs with rules and regulations. But for this winter, regulations are that you can keep a walleye between 19 and 21 inches, so like from there to there, and then you can keep one over 28. Basically a catch and release sort of situation, I don't know. Um, Pretty much. And so rules, regulations riddle both bodies of water at Galilee and at Garrison. So the law is heavy on that Galilean shore. Like powerful waves of uh, relentless regulations that rhythmically pound on that shore, so are the rules. And then, as the day goes on, it slips into twilight. And then twilight slips into night. And there was darkness upon her shores. Capernaum was quieted and calmed by that Good Friday night, and so were her shores. Then Jesus rose, as sure as the sun rising in the east, casting glorious rays of hope across the heavens, mirrored there by the glass of Galilee, where Jesus, walking upon the shore, saw silhouettes of two brothers standing in the distance, and as he came near to them, he found out their names, Andrew and Peter, and they were casting out hope into the sea for a big catch. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And the Bible says immediately, They put down their nets, and they followed him. And then, walking further upon the shore, seeing two other brothers, 
James and John. They were mending nets with their father, Zebedee. And Jesus said the same thing. Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Mending their nets there with their dad, they dropped everything. And again, the Bible said, immediately, they followed Jesus. In following Jesus, it was an epiphany. It was that this light of Jesus cast out the darkness of their Good Friday worlds. It was an epiphany because Jesus right there was made known by his presence with them, the way he spoke to them. And so for these two sets of brothers that broke away from the powers that be, instead of being regulated by Rome, they were now rejoicing with this rabbi. And instead of being in the law of the land that binds, they were now following this gospel, this gospel that frees. And so as they walked along the shore, the sun began to shine, the wind began to whip white caps, and the Spirit was with them. They were walking in mission. They were walking wet in the baptizing rhythm of the waves crashing to the shore. And as these four who were walking with Jesus looked back, they could no longer see their past. They could no longer see their footprints because they were washed away by the waves. And as they looked forward, they followed this rabbi, this Jesus. And all they could see was his footprints and the soul of him who they followed. Meanwhile, overhead, gulls were laughing, gliding on the wind, and the Spirit was alive on that scene. For this was the first mission team ever sent. And with the tailwind on that northwest shore, it pushed, that, it pushed them right up, onward and upward, into the Galilean countryside, where they spoke the good news to the people. They would teach and reach out to those in need. This freeing epiphany gospel. And so, here we are at church. And here we are, not too far away from this, this small town, this fishing town called Garrison. And so, here we are at the Y Club, if you will, if you know what I'm talking about. We're asking why. Why doesn't Jesus call us in the same way that he called his first disciples? Why? In short, he does. Whether in Garrison or in Galilee, God calls us in much the same way. By water and his word, he bids us to follow him. By the washing of the waves, we are called to walk wet in mission, moving forward in him, with him, following in his footsteps. And with the tailwind of the Spirit, we too are called to care and share and reach out to those in need, those in our sort of Galilean countryside, in our community. And so perhaps this song says it best, you have come down to the lakeshore. I love these words. And it wasn't until preparing for this message that I learned that this song really was about this text. You have come down to the lake shore, seeking neither the wise or the wealthy, but only asking for me to follow. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling. You've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat, but with you I will seek other seas. Amen.